welcome back. We are here again at the Quilting Corner, and we have a subscriber spotlight to start out with today. Her name is Shelby, and she is a local person here in town. She has found a couple quilt tops that her grandmother had made. Her grandmother has recently passed away, and she found some quilt tops that her grandmother had made, and she brought them to us to finish for her because she does not quilt, she does not sew. So we finished the quilt tops for her and bound them for her. So they are ready to give back to her. I didn't bring one of them home, I should have, but I did bring the other one. The other one is this one. It is beautiful. This one with the scalloped border. I love this quilt top. I'll show you a picture of it laid out so you can see the whole thing. Her grandmother did a beautiful job, and now Shelby has a quilt to remember her grandmother by. She has two. So what great memories is she going to have now? Wonderful memories from her grandmother that she will share for many years to come. And her grandfather will get to see them, and I, I know he will love that as well. So, Shelby, great uh, quilts you have found. You are gifted now from your grandmother, and I know she would be proud. So, she did a great job, and Shelby has a great heirloom for many, many, many years to come. So, let's look at it. I'll lay it out so you can see it. Here is the quilt as a whole. I love the scallop borders. Look how pretty. What a great heirloom for many, many years to come. For today's tip or trick part of the video, I wanted to show you, which would coincide with this quilt, how I did the binding on this. So I figured it would go well with this, this subscriber section. And now I'm going to show you how I did that binding. We are ready to bind a scalloped edge quilt. So I'm going to show you how to get started with that. We have already made our binding and we've got the strips hanging to the right side of our machine. We could go ahead and iron this flat. And if you're new at this, you probably do want to iron it flat but I am not going to iron this one flat. I'm just gonna fold it in half. What we do is we take, let me take it down to the table. Now you can see it a little bit better. What we're gonna do is we are going to take this binding. I've pinned it, but just to fold it right. So I've, I'm taking it and I'm gonna come along one of these edges of this quilt and I'm gonna pin it and I'm gonna come up about, oh, I don't know, about eight inches or so, give or take. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna come up one of these curves, take it to the sewing machine, and I'm just gonna sew it down just like we do the edging of a regular quilt, but we're gonna go a little slower because of this curved edge. We're gonna go up that curve, stop, place that binding where it needs to go, curve it, back up that edge. So it's going to take a little bit to go around this one because it's not a straight edge. We're going to take our time and it's going to be worth it in the end because it's going to make it that much prettier. We could cut it off. I don't want to do that because I think it would look better this way. I think this is what the grandmother intended it to be. So we are trying to keep it with that. So we're going to do about maybe a six inch piece. Then we're going to stop. We're going to position the binding again to where it needs to go. Do another six inch piece or so. Stop again, position again, all the way around this quilt. 
This is an heirloom quilt, so we need to take our time with it. Even if it's not, you need to take your time with it. But this one is someone's grandmother made it. It's special to her. I don't want to do anything to mess this up. So it doesn't mind, it doesn't bother me to go a little slower to make sure I get it right. It will be worth it in the end. You're just gonna keep it at a quarter inch all the way around it, turning it with the quilt. Because we are doing this scallop, it is gonna take quite a bit more time. And just turn it as you get to those edges. You will be glad you did in the end. I'm almost to the edge and I'll show you what we do. It's the same as the regular binding but I'm gonna show it to you again. So now that I'm trying to get this out so you can see it. Now that I'm at the edge, I'm gonna do just like I would with a regular quilt. I'm gonna stop at that corner, about a quarter inch, I'm gonna cut my thread, pull it out. And what I'm gonna do is make sure it's folded in half like this. I'm gonna put my hand here, fold it over, so that it makes that crease like that. Put my hand over it, flap it over my hand, hold it with the other hand, and now you've got it. So now I'm gonna come back to the sewing machine and from the very corner edge, I'm gonna start sewing down at a quarter inch again. When I get to the end, I stop it about a quarter inch away but when I start back after I've put it back in place for the next corner, for the next side of the quilt, then I start at the edge of the quilt. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go all the way down this line. My machine is telling me that I'm almost out of bobbin, so I'm gonna have to stop in a minute and change my bobbin. But I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around the edge and I'll come back to you. We're at this corner again, so I'm gonna show you again what we did. We stopped about a quarter inch away from this edge. I've got my binding going the way that it is now, this way, but I need it to go this way. So what I've gotta do is flip it over my hand, put my hand there, flip it over into the right of my hand to where now it's going the right direction, just the opposite way, but it's still going this way instead of this way. It's just going over here. So I'm gonna put my hand here. That's gonna cause that crease right there. I'm gonna put my hand on that crease. I'm gonna flip this over my hand. Then I'm gonna take my other hand and hold it down right there at that corner. Now I've got it going the right direction that it needs to go. So I'm gonna put it back under the sewing machine and at the very edge, start sewing. And I'm gonna keep this binding going with the curve. It's the same as regular binding on a straight edge. It's just, you're having to go slower and you're having to move this binding to the way that this edging is. So instead of going straight down this edge, I'm just curving it along with this curve. And I'm literally going, about five or six inches, stopping, repositioning, making sure that I'm with that next curve and I'm gonna keep my needle, keep it going the direction it needs to go, the fabric, hold it down, make it go to that curve. Stitch a few inches. I wish it went a little faster, but you can't force it. You can't make it go faster because you want it to be the way you want it to be. You don't want to speed up to try to get it done and then it'd be bad and you have to rip it out. So take your time with this process. 
I promise it's worth it in the end. Go with that curve. Hold it down. Go with the next curve. Feed it through, making sure that that curve is going through the right way, that the, the stitching is going in the curve. Do a few more inches. Stop. Do it again. We're gonna do this the entire way around this quilt. Once we get to the end, we will flip it over and do just like we do on a straight edge and stitch it on the top. Reposition. Line it up with the curve. Makes that hump, you can't see it in the camera. So I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around. When I get to the end, I will show you how we flip it over and do the other side. Actually, when I get to the end, I'll show you how we combine the end pieces and then we'll show you how to flip it over. So let me keep going till I get to the end. I don't wanna bore you. And then I'll come back to you and show you the next step. Okay, I'm at the end, not far from where I started. So I'm gonna cut my thread and I am going to want a two and a half inch overlap of the beginning piece to the ending piece. So what I'm gonna do is, I know that this piece will go here. I'm gonna position it where it should be, which it would be starting right here. I need this piece to lay over it by two and a half inches. Cut off a little piece of this binding, the same piece that I left hanging at the end right here that I was sewing, because I know from here to here is two and a half inches. So I'm gonna position this where it will be when I'm sewing it, and it would be right here. So I'm gonna pin that in place. Then I'm gonna put this one right there on top of it, because I know this is two and a half inches from here to here. So I'm gonna lay this one like it will be when I sew it. I take it around these curves, pretending that it's sewn on, but it's not. I'm gonna overlay that piece that I just went and laid down there. And where those two pieces meet, the end of this piece and the end of this piece, right on top of each other, I wanna cut that. So now I know when I take this piece out and throw it away, I know that this from here to here is two and a half inches. That's what I need. So I'm gonna take my pin out. I'm gonna take these two pieces, the first piece that we started with and the piece we ended with, put them right sides together at an angle like this. Then I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna stitch it across just like we're adding another piece of binding. Stitch it diagonally across. Okay, phone interrupted us there. So I'm gonna take it and now I've sewn across this edge diagonally across this piece like so i'm going to clip off this triangle piece here just like we did when we made our binding and now it should fit perfectly so i'm going to come back and i'm going to do just like i was doing a second ago i'm going to sew this binding down once i got done sewing the binding down on this side i just flipped it over and then sewed along the whole front, just like we did with regular binding around the front. And then you are done with your quilt top. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment of the Quilting Corner. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great week, a great week, rest of your weekend, a great week coming up. And until next time, happy quilting.